Today we are talking about speed hut and the new gauges. So here's two of the gauges and we've got another two over here. And uh, here's the big shout out to speed hut. They are sponsoring this video series guys. So do me a big favor, go down below and check them out. They make custom gauges for any of your needs. Now, when you hear custom, you guys are probably thinking like, okay, so they changed some balance. Let me, let me rephrase this. They make custom, custom gauges. So when I think of Speed Hut, I really think of the muscle cars. Uh, they make those custom dashes and stuff for the muscle cars. I think of like Chip Foost. Um, I think of the high-end SEMA builders when I think of Speed Hut. Uh, and when I speaking, when speaking with some of the people there, they're trying to get into the import scene and they're, they pretty much let you have the gamut. Like when you design your gauges, they go, what do you want? How do you want it? What colors do you want? Like when I mean custom down to the needle, they have eight, I think it was eight or nine different variations of how you could have the needle. That's how detail oriented it is. It's crazy. Um, I actually picked a specific needle that I like it where it's this orange color and I like it having this little orange piece in the back. They had one where it didn't, they had one where it's a little bit thinner, a little bit thicker, they had this where it's a uh, chrome piece. You name it, you had it. Um, so we have two setups here. Two are for the MR2 and two are for my friend uh, Sean in his GSX. The two I have right here are for the MR2. One is a wide band uh, gauge and the other one is a boost gauge. Now I pick specifically 20 PSI because it's going in this and it's not well ever going to be over 20 PSI. Let's be realistic. Uh, but I did also want to monitor some air fuel ratios because I feel like the car is running really rich right now and I have no way to monitor it. So this is why I went to check but let's go ahead and open this up uh, and give you guys a look at what's inside. Now that we have everything out here, let me detail some of the stuff that's in the kit. Uh, we'll start off here first with the air fuel ratio gauge. Uh, I want the analog style. Usually you see them in digital. I want it analog just because I just think it looks better with it being a very 90s car. I wanted an analog look. And I love the fact that this has a peak hold, meaning that you can see what your peak hold uh, is for your maximum air fuel ratio. So let's say it's tipping down here and you're running very, very rich. You can hit this, swipe through, and it'll say, all right, your max... Um, rich it, enrichment will say, we'll say 10, nine. All right. I know that's too rich. I want to be about 11, about 11, five to 12. Oh, so I know if I'm tuning the car, I need to, uh, pull some fuel out of it. I, I like the fact that it has that these gauges are high, high end. I also like this. Most of the time, guys, if you've ever seen the gauge, they have those stupid metal prongs in the back and they just suck. This gives you a nice tight fitment. They actually have a threaded back to them and you screw this on and that's what tightens it up to your gauge pod holder. I absolutely love, love, love this. Um, it comes with the actual length of wire you need and on their website, they have multiple lengths. So if you're thinking, oh, how do I know it's gonna be long enough? They have up to, I think it was like 12 feet. Like you don't need 12 feet for your car, but they have up to like something crazy, like 12 or 16 feet. And this kit also comes with the gauge and bung if you need it welded in. I am fortunate enough that my downpipe that's in it has a bung specifically for an air fuel ratio gauge. So I'd have an aftermarket one just for this. So I'm very fortunate. Now, when it comes to the boost gauge, it's the same concept here again. I went with a 20 PSI boost gauge. Now, the reason for that is the max in this car you can run is around 17 to 18 PSI. So I would just went with the 20 PSI boost gauge. Even if I go to a bigger turbo on pump gas, I'll never run over 18 PSI. And I like seeing the full sweep of the gauge. So I went with the lure boost setting. Now, again, with the kit, it comes with all the wiring. Again, you can get longer so you don't have to extend wires or anything. That's up to you. Um, I do like this is not like other kits. So when you think of boost gauge, you think of those long vacuum tubes, which they do give you some vacuum line here, and I'll explain that. You think of these long vacuum lines running through the car. This is a true boost gauge. Like I said, it comes with wiring because this comes with a boost solenoid. It actually reads the pressure from the manifold up to the gauge. So you're not getting like a drop in pressure or if the lines kink somewhere along that long crazy run, you don't have to worry about it. This is a true boost gauge kit. This isn't some cheap kit that you get off eBay. This is a high end quality uh, boost gauge kit. So I'm very, very impressed so far. I'm hoping to get this done soon. I'm waiting on a gauge podge holder right now from Auto Extrude. Uh, once that gets in, we'll work on that. All right, guys, so we've started working on the MR2 now. Uh, we're taking the entire dash out and interior. You can see we've got the bottom part of the dash out here. We've got the center console out, which we've got sitting there, and we've got the top box sitting there. Um, we're doing this just so we have better access of how to run the wiring because we're going to run it from the top here down through, snake it, and then uh, figure out the best way to get it down through here. Found a little opening back here. If you look, this flapped up here. That little opening right here, we're going to 
just pry the wiring through, or what do you think is best there, BB? We're gonna want... take it out, and we're gonna probably cut another hole and just make it nice. Okay, so he's doing it the proper way. I would have just like you know, shoved rigged, it through there. Shoved it through there. Probably destroyed the sensor in general. So we're gonna do it the right way. And uh, yep, that's it. All right, guys. So we've got the MR2 up in the air now. We've got BB right here. So we went ahead. We have a Burke downpipe on this, and lucky for us. It already has a bung in it that's perfect for a second O2 sensor. So all we did is screw that in, and now we have all of these panels you can see underneath the car here that need to come off so we can run the wiring up through. Um, they're just serviceable panels, so we just take an impact and start pulling each screw off, and well, this is the fun part, huh? Yippee. Yeah. So what we're doing here is, uh, BB in his hand here has the boost solenoid, uh, which it does is gives you reference to the actual boost gauge. Uh, we're running some of the wire right now, um, trying to run this through in a clean manner. Uh, we ran it through the whole entire body of the car, but now we're trying to tuck it down out of the way. We've got a nice clamp for it here too. Um, obviously the rubber keeps it from anti-vibration, something like this, you don't want vibrating around. You could use zip ties, you could get away with it, but if you can, please use a clamp, anything with rubber to keep vibration to a minimum. Uh, and if you can also, try to find a vacuum port that isn't used. You can always tap into something else, but if you can find a dedicated boost reference or a vacuum reference, that would be ideal. So I'm gonna take this wire here, run it down through, and I'll show you guys the end result. Guys, we got the uh, boost pressure sensor installed. Um, Ryan found a vacuum source right here that we teed into, which is the factory blow off valve line right off the manifold. And the sensor we put right there. Uh, he found a nice little bolt off the uh, factory water neck, 10 millimeter, and with our rubber P-clamp, we uh, secured that and ran it into the cabin, which we will show you at a later time. As you guys saw there, Brandon was showing you, we've got the boost sensor here. Uh, down below there, it's even hard to see. We're in an MR2 here, guys, so you guys know how tight this is. Uh, so down there is the O2 sensor. I don't think I can even get it on camera. There's the first. The uh, first sensor, but the secondary is down below. I can't even get it right now on camera, but it's all run through the car We ran all the wiring Up and through here. So we have our center console box Which has four screws in that we had to remove we have four screws in this that we had to remove We put this all back in very very simple I mean they're literally screws pop this back on with the shifter now. We've got everything wired up uh, There is actually a bolt underneath the car here over to the side uh, that is actually a perfect reference for um for the grounds and then inside what we did is we tapped in for power we tapped into the light here so we can actually there makes them dimmable uh, so all we have to do is that so now that that we've got tapped in and stuff all you have to do and you don't need any turn car especially if you have an mr2 i just click on the light so you hit once and we'll do it here hit the grand should kick on there we go look at that now again guys i don't have a I don't have a gauge holder yet. I'm waiting for a custom one to be made for me. I'm having one 3D printed, but check how nice out, nice these things are. Like that is so freaking nice. I'm in love with the way these turned out. Awesome. So freaking awesome. Matches up very nicely with my factory gauges now because I put LEDs inside of my factory gauges. So I wanted to have orange needles and white uh, gauge faces. Like again, guys, this is all 100% customizable. You don't have to do white. You could do green, yellow, red, whatever you want. Needle colors can be different shapes, sizes. That's a great thing with Speed Hut. They let you 110% customize how you want these to be. Like I said, guys, there is a dimmer switch for this. Uh, I personally am just leaving them on full blast. I actually tucked everything up and under so you can't see anything. Literally, you can't see any wiring. It leaves it to like a factory look because it matches up perfectly. They're not overly bright. Like uh, the one thing I like about this, so other gauges, the white in the background would just be like even bleeding through the black gauge face. Like it just shows just enough um, that it's not going to like blind you when you're trying to drive down the road, which I really like. Uh, they just, they're made perfectly. Guys, I'm like beyond happy with the way these turned out. Uh, we've got bigger plans coming for the MR2 here. Uh, turbo kit's still going on, messing with the Super here still. If you guys can see, there's some things boxed up in there. You'll see that in the next video. I can't wait for you guys to see this. I've got massive, massive plans. So we just did the transmission. Now it's time for some more power. I'll let you guys take some guesses down below. What do you think the new big power mods are coming for the Super? What do you think it's gonna happen to them? Just let me know what some ideas you guys have. 
Uh, I kind of want to know what you feel in the comments. So thank you very much for tuning in today. As usual, do me a big favor. First and foremost, go check out speedhut.com. Uh, they are a big sponsor for this video. They helped out me and Sean with the Eclipse GSX. I can't thank them enough for sending me these gauges. Very high quality, very customizable, very good customer service. So guys, if you could go check them out, do me that favor. Also do me one big favor too. Go check out the Pure Function website. Got new hats, shirts, t-shirts, you name it, I got it. Thank you guys very much and I'll talk to you later. Peace.